I'm gonna say hardcore, and I want you guys to say parkour, okay? Hardcore. 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 Awesome, I've always wanted to do that too. Thank you, everybody. Uh, sadly, it seems as though many people have only heard of parkour from Dwight Schrute and Michael Scott <laughs> from the TV show The Office. And for those of you who have never heard the word parkour before, it is derived from a simplified French term meaning course. But it's so much more than that. It is a discipline constructed on overcoming obstacles and efficient movement through any given environment. Aside from The Office, parkour can be found in the biggest blockbuster films as well as the highest money-making video games. It is found being taught in gymnastics and tumbling gyms all across the world. It is found all over the internet in millions of YouTube videos. In fact, a YouTube search for parkour resulted in over five and a half million videos, and a Google web search returned over 33 million results. Though parkour has only officially been around for a few decades, it is intriguing more and more individuals, both young and old, to join its ranks. Maybe you're wondering what is it about parkour that has people so intrigued? or why you should listen to a speech about something that seems so dangerous or risky, or that may seem completely unrelated to you. I am here today to change any preconceived notions that you may have about parkour by expanding your understanding of what it is, what parkour has to offer, and how you can begin your training in parkour today with the help of parkour vision. So first, what is parkour? It is often referred to as the art of movement, the most efficient path, meaning the fastest, smartest, and safest route from point A to point B. It is also the ability to turn obstacles into opportunities. Jeffrey Kidder, a professor of culture and urban sociology at Northern Illinois University, has done extensive research on parkour and refers to it as urban adventurism, a practice that allows individuals to give meaning to their actions and affirm the value of self. A man named George Abair traveled the world in the early, mid-1900s, studying various kind of movements and developed a style of movement called the natural method. George ended up sharing this natural method with the French military and other rescue personnel. One that was trained in this natural method was Raymond Bell. He taught his son David this movement technique and that he had learned. What began as a childhood game with his teenage friends and of chasing and escaping each other, David Bell and his friends were discovered while using these parkour techniques, filmed for documentaries, and are now regarded as the founders of parkour today. By traditional definition, some people may not feel that parkour is a sport, since it lacks rules or points and has very little competitiveness. But it requires great strength and endurance as it relies on running, jumping, vaulting, leaping, and climbing. Parkour has made its reach to the United States within the last decade from Europe and Britain. Great Britain officially sanctioned it as a sport in 2009. There is also the word free running, which many people use interchangeably with parkour. Sometimes I do as well. Free running is, is not efficient movement, but rather the different tricks, flips, and spins that someone can create in any given environment. It is based on creativity and style. Second, what does parkour have to offer? Well, for one, it will improve your overall health. Evidence suggests that our genes evolved to favor exercise. So basically, in prehistoric times, if a person couldn't move quickly and wasn't strong, that person died. It's history. George Abair himself talked about the need of being strong to be useful. Parkour is a full body workout. You are going to improve your balance, vertical jump, core and grip strength, as well as mastering uh, specific techniques. I recently watched a video describing how parkour is now being taught in England to help promote fall prevention and balance for the elderly. A San Jose University study showed 90% of parkour participants described the discipline as being a creative outlet. Parkour is creative because you take what is an obstacle to others and turn it into a form of recreation. Now that you know a little bit of what parkour is and what it has to offer you, I'm going to teach you how to get started in parkour. So first, you must obtain parkour vision. That is, to see your environment and problems in a new light. It's the ability to see the world at a different angle, a paradigm shift, 
a new lens to look through. What is a set of stairs and a handrail to a skateboarder than it is to a natural human? What is a plane to a skydiver? Or what is a cliff to a base jumper? We must change how we view our surroundings, and that is what parkour vision is. Second, take the risk. Do something that scares you. Take some time to enjoy a little risk. After many years of training parkour, there are certain moves that used to scare me a whole heck of a lot. Now they don't. I used to get very nervous and start shaking every time I stood at a ledge that was only seven feet high. Now I embrace these moments. I thrive off of these moments. It is in these times that I realize how far I've come and how much I've developed in character and strength. I get people that will say, get down from there, you're gonna hurt yourself, or stop before you get injured. Um, but why quit something dear to me that is solely based on self-improvement? Just because others may be scared of something doesn't mean that everyone is or has to be. Don't firefighters have to get over the fears and the risks of fighting fires? Don't doctors have to overcome the fear and risk of performing life-threatening operations? Yet they both do them anyway. Train as hard as you can in something in order to remove as much risk as possible. Why not learn to control your body and all of its movements? It is worth taking the risk. There is far better reward for those who do. So take the risk. Now I'm gonna do a, a small demonstration um, about parkour and some of the things that you can do with a given object. Um, just as I said earlier, turning objects into opportunities. I'm not here to teach you all to go out and sign up for the next parkour class you see, but rather implement parkour vision and the mindset of someone who does parkour. Now, if you were in my class, I'm gonna demonstrate three ways to get over this simple object, uh, where if you were in my class, you would have to do five, 10, 15, or 20 ways to get over this just one object. So I, what I want you guys to do before I, I demonstrate the moves myself is I want you to think of three specific ways exactly where your hands are gonna be, exactly where your feet are gonna be, exactly how your body's gonna get over this obstacle, okay? There's probably a lot of different ways. But to different people, it's gonna be different, right? Writing a paper is different for everybody. Um, writing a biography is different. Obviously, everybody's different, has their own experience. So I'm gonna demonstrate my experience and my park revision on this obstacle. Does everybody have three, or two at least, or one maybe? Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to demonstrate a few. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. So in summary, the art of movement, or parkour, is a creative discipline that can improve your health and enhance your creativity. With your new ability to see the world with parkour vision and the commitment to taking risks and overcoming your own obstacles, we can shape modern society through parkour. Thank you.